together. So today we're going to show you how to make Katie slow cooker chicken. We have orga a whole organic chicken right here. We picked this up at Costco. It was about two thirty something a pound. So we're going to um, take the skin off of that, get all the guts out of the inside. But before I get the chicken juices out, I need to chop up two tablespoons of garlic. So we get to work on that. Mark could probably start on the sauce in the meantime. Yes. So honey, why don't you get, um, let's see, a half a cup, cup of chicken or beef broth. We've got some... Orgasmic beef broth. I'm using beef because I had beef one over Half a cup? Yeah, here's the bowl. Pour it. Oh, in the bowl. Um, we already had the beef one open in the fridge, so I want to use it up. Beef, chicken, whatever. It's just for moisture and flavor. This is your chicken lube. And the humor is going to be terrible throughout this. Next, you can use soy sauce or you can use Bragg's liquid amino. And we're going to use a third a cup of that. Now, Bragg's liquid amino, I'm a big fan of. I like using, um, when you can, I, I, you know what? If I was eating sushi, I'd just say screw it. Third of a cup? Third of a cup. I just say screw it, you know, I'm gonna eat some soy sauce. But when making stuff at home, especially in the slow cooker, I like the fact this isn't high in sodium because I like using um, sea salt as my as my uh, salt because of its mix of you know different minerals. It's a bit healthier. It's not like table salt. Um, this is basically vegetable protein from soybeans, and it tastes pretty good. You see Thomas in here. Thomas, what do you need? We will, we'll, we'll we'll do these. Pirates he is big on pirates. Here, here's, here's some pirates. Um, well, and this is a this is a blood pirate and this is a crypt pirate. Here you go, Thomas. Go play bloods and crypts with your cards. Okay, what okay. next, honey? A third a cup of organic olive oil. Organic olive oil. A third a cup. Extra virgin. Yes. Um, in the local in household, we prefer virgins. In fact, I am a born again virgin. Okay, here we go. She's already getting. She's gonna hit me. Okay. I'm a knife. <laughs> oh, well, I have, a sh I have a measuring cup. What next? A quarter of a cup of honey. Here, use this. Quarter of a cup yes. of honey. Use this. I'm going to try something here. We're going to try spray. Oh, yeah, that's, that's something I saw on Rachel Ray. And you know, I got that thing for Rachel spray Ray. Spray a little oil so that the honey doesn't This is a good. proprietary mix I have for cooking. It's MCT. It's about a quarter of, eh, about one quarter, one sixth MCT. And some macadamia oil I keep in the misto. Um, for when I cook, when I lube up my pan. So here's the honey. Yeah. No, not you. The honey. That was that was funny, wasn't it? Um, you know what? This is a uh, not organic, but you know we bought this before we did the whole organic kick, and we don't really use much honey. So if you can get, you know, get the nice, you know, actually you could buy if you live in the south. If, if you live in the south, you no, know, I'm gonna have to double fist this. If you live in the south or anywhere with farms and stuff nearby, you could probably get the um, real honey straight up from the bees. But um, that's that's good stuff. We bought ours from Walmart. Um, yeah, the company, our local um, company shop has the honey. Throw that in there, Katie. That was a grand idea on uh, on the spray. That came right off. Uh -huh. That came right off. This is going to require very little cleaning. What next, baby? Um, next, we're going to do Worcestershire sauce. We need one teaspoon. Here's one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. You don't want too much of this. Now, Worcestershire sauce really helps bring out the flavor in meat. Um, not the healthiest sauce in the world, but we're using a teaspoon for an entire friggin' chicken. If we die over that, then we weren't very healthy to begin with. What's next, my honey? See how I'm putting all the ingredients I've used to the left? Balsamic. Balsamic. And you're going to want two, te two teaspoons. Get the teaspoon. Okay. It just went in the honey cup, so it's clean. Two teaspoons. There's one. This is the balsamic vinegar. Okay, what next, baby? Um, lemon juice. You might have to squeeze that lemon bit. We need, uh... Two teaspoons of lemon juice. Mm, this is going to be tight. Yeah, you might have to just... No, 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 we got it, we got it. You can squeeze a lemon, or you can get one of these pre-squeezed lemons. I prefer squeezing lemons, but, you know, this is easier for those of you who have jobs and stuff. And test all this stuff. Sesame oil. I had a, uh, a guy I worked with at Weeder Publications. His name was Lyle. And one time him and his uh, wife came over. I can't open this. 
this crap. Came over and um, and he made something called he called Cal that knife. Now he called Calvi chicken. And ses it, you, the sesame oil in it was just absolutely fantastic. That's really sharp knife. It is. Yeah. That's why it's effective. Um, you just want one teaspoon. Don't ruin my good knife. Okay, it's fine. That ruins it. It's not a good knife. Uh, that doesn't look like two tablespoons. I think I need some more garlic. Okay, so how much uh, sesame oil? Uh, one teaspoon. Only one teaspoon. One teaspoon. I'm getting some garlic cloves. You need two more. You know, let's just do this. I'm going to walk in front of this camera. You can see my beautiful complexion. Here you go. One teaspoon, you said? For the third time. I'm sorry. I was busy counting garlic cloves. One teaspoon. Sesame oil is very strong. And, you know, it actually has a lot of beneficial compounds, including sesame, sesame oil, all that good stuff. You're not going to get enough of the oil, but it's going to add a nice flavor kick to your meal. And then I just whip this up. Thomas, we're a little bit busy. We're playing with knives. Okay, now just whip it up. Yeah, just um, This is my whipper. Mix it together. You got everything. I told you everything, right? Everything on the counter? Everything on the counter has been used. Okay, well then the next step, just let that sit for now. Can I whip it? After it's mixed. And you're going to you're gonna clean the chicken. I'm going to... Oh, yucky. Okay, I'm going to... need a trash bag for the skin. I'm going to need a trash bag for the skin. We're going to cut... Is there any trash bags in this drawer? No. Damn it. Okay. Them. Okay, I have a trash bag. Okay, so you're going to want to use these butcher scissors and cut off all the skin and take out the guts that are on the inside. Now you want to take the skin off before cooking one so the ingredients can get that actual flavor into the chicken. I mean, the skin's going to act as a barrier for those flavors. Uh, another reason is the skin is much easier to remove before it's cooked. Yes. Um, you're not cooking it in all that fat. Yeah, exactly. Now, I'm all, now when you cook it, now when you take the skin off, regardless, the fat's going to be gone. But, um, you know, so I think I'm going to take this, put it on the bag, and then you just take the scissors, you cut a, you cut a hole in the skin, and then you just... Reach in, there might be a bag of guts in there. Oh, i got to get the guts. That's my next step. One thing at a time, though. Then you just kind of go to town, yanking the skin off. So this is uh, getting rid of the skin before we cook it, which you might have never heard this technique. You might just wait till you cook it and then take it off meathead style. And but the flavor is going to soak in better if you're soaking it in a, our marinade. Yeah, the marinade. Nice. It's just going to marinate the skin. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And how many of y'all meatheads cook boneless, skinless chicken breast? You know, the thing is, with the organic chicken and everything and taking the skin off, it's not going to be that terrible to rock out eating the brown meat. Now, don't be afraid of dark meat. You know, dark meat is fine. I finally finished chopping enough garlic, so I'm going to stir that in here. <laughs> While you do that, I'm going to continue molesting this chicken. <laughs> This thing is, again, at all, at all times, if you can. Now, we, you know, I'm going to start buying my chicken from a local farmer. Um, buy local, support your local grower. Costco, for those of you who aren't living in the boonies like we are, you know, Costco does sell these organic chickens, which we're using now. Um, it's the next best thing. You all right, babe? Let you draw some. Um, it's the next best thing to... You know, getting that chicken, you could actually pick yourself off the farm, which is pretty much what we're going to start doing. You know, one, it supports local economy, which is great. And two is that, I mean, you know, you're getting away from all the nasty things that can mass produce food. I remember on Food Inc., they were showing the chickens how their legs can not even support their weight because of all the hormones they're on. And these are mass producing, you know, the Purdue brand, I believe, was the uh, grower. So if you buy Purdue from Walmart, which I used to, up to about four months ago, um, if you buy Purdue, you know, you're getting crap meat. I do not eat that crap. And, you know, the bottom line is you can argue all day if um, it's worth it financially, even if it's just a slight possibility, it's really not at the end of the day that much more expensive. Plus, it's your, it's your, food, it's your fuel source. It's what drives your life, your food. It's your fuel. 
So at the end of the day, it's worth the extra, you know, 10 bucks a week or whatever it is to get the highest quality meat. Now, Katie, I'm a... Okay, so... The wings, the skin ain't coming off. That's fine. I'm going to get... Yeah, I'm basically, you know what, I'm a breast okay, man. Okay, you're just going to want to, um, just pat it dry. Hold on, I got to... Now, take this out. The gizzards, guzzards. Some people, Some like, people to like to eat that. I know my grandfather did. Mm -hmm. My father did. My mother did. Um, your grandfather loved to eat that crap, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just how they used to roll. I mean, especially the Depression era, they ate whatever the hell they could, so they have a liking for it. Now, what do I do with this? Got it dry and dump it in the crock pot. Dry. You want to try, try spray the crock pot a little bit? Um, just use a little oil. You know what? I don't see a problem with spraying it. It's got oil in the sauce, but the you put it down, let's put it on the bottom. Okay, before I touch anything other than a paper towel, I am going to wash my hands on the other side of the sink. Don't get soap on your chicken. But I am. I'm going to take some okay. paper towels. It's already there. Oh, wow, thank you. You're awesome. Just pat it dry, stick it in the crock pot, and we're going to dump this over it. Pat it dry. Dry. See, now most of the skin is off. Hold on, I didn't even get the underside. Now, he, here's what a chicken breast looks like when it's not fed hormones. It's not as huge as the ones you see when you buy chicken breasts that aren't organic. Because those things are pumped more full of steroids than an IFBB Pro. Okay? Do I put it ass side up or back side up? Uh, I don't think it matters. It's just going to slow cook anyway. And okay. Now, we're just gonna... now we, put it, we put it with the breasts facing up, the wings facing down. Uh, so we're just going to drizzle this over. Alright, so just cover it in the oil and we're going to slow cook it. Slow! Now we got it. Now since we're starting this midday, it's one o'clock. We went and trained, and this is our Saturday. I worked in the morning. Behind this camera is actually my elaborate office setup. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're doing the four-hour cook. But we're gonna eat at six. So we're gonna cook it till six, till about five o'clock on level four. And then we're gonna move it to level ten till we eat it around six six thirty. Right, Katie? Sure. Yeah, that sounds great to me. Is that it? That's it. Well, let's get to uh, cooking, and uh, this is a day in the life. And come here, Thomas. And I. I'm gonna go play pirate. Let's go play some pirate. All right, it's been in an hour, and we're looking, and the, the oil's starting to get really hot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my baster, and I'm gonna just put some sauce over the top. Oh, that's nice and hot. The level four cook is a really hot cook, and. Um, just want to make sure that everything's nice and just because you don't want to leave this lid off for long. Because remember, it's a pressure cooker. No, it's a slow cooker. A slow cooker, but it's, yeah, yeah pressure whatever. Cooker. Yeah, blah. Wrong language. Okay, that's good. We're flipped. Yeah, see, one thing I learned is crock pot is just a brand name. They're all slow cookers. Just a little bit of information. Okay. All right, the chicken is done. I am going to gently, that's so tender. Look, the leg just fell off. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. This is a slow cooked, it only took, it only took about, you can get this done like in less four than four hours. hours. Less, yeah. But you can also do this in the oven at a low temperature. Um, that's something you're gonna have to experiment with. We actually got to turn it off early, put it on warm, and it's just been sitting here. What we made sure to do is baste it throughout about every hour, but look at that. Look at that meat, that's like just our phenomenal. Baster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am the master basta. And um, that's it. This is the chicken. That's how to cook it. And uh, have fun eating it. Another easy thing you can make for your family for FQ. Family, fitness, fun. Peace out.